Hi everyone, it's Don from Don's Family Vacations and I had a subscriber ask me all about the Norwegian Epic because they're thinking on taking a cruise on this ship. So I thought, well, I better get it out there since I'm going in for surgery next week and uh, yeah, who knows how long I'm going to be in so I better get that question answered. So right now let's talk about the Norwegian Epic coming up right after this. So the Norwegian Epic is the second largest ship on the Norwegian fleet right now. It was built in 2010 after about a two year delay from the manufacturer getting the ship ready because of complications and contract litigations and things like that. But they finally took possession of it. It spends a lot of its time in Spain doing a Barcelona cruise and then it comes back to Port Canaveral. So there are transatlantic cruises and repositioning cruises you can do on this ship. It's a large ship, it's over 1,081 feet, so yeah, it's one of the largest ships out there. Like I said, the second largest one with Norwegian. It holds 4,100 passengers, and it kind of has that a really unique design when you look at it with that big square front on the top of the ship. It looks kind of odd. Uh, so some of the good things about it, it is Norwegian, so it has some some great entertainment on board. It's got the ice bar. We have some really good specialty dumplings. And on this particular ship, I would recommend the Tanapi, Tanapi? Tanaki, uh, Japanese restaurant where they chop everything up in front of you and they cook in front of you on the big large grills because the food in there is some of the best on the ship. And it's probably my favorite of the specialty dining on the Norwegian Epic. Now, some of the things that are a little odd about the ship um, and they've kind of changed it on the new you know getaway and things like that but it looks like it should have this big huge upper deck and it does it looks like it should be huge but because of the water slides and things like that that takes up a lot of deck space up top so there are areas on the ship when you're sunbathing that just seem to be crowded quite a bit all the time especially on sea days and it can be very hard to find a place up top to get off by yourself and if you uh, heard me talking about the Caribbean Princess uh, ship even though it's roughly the same size ship it had a lot of space up top where you could go and be alone on the ship and it had a thousand less people so even though this ship is slightly larger it seems even less in size when you're just trying to get a place by yourself. So keep that in mind, it could seem crowded. That being said, it's got a lot of activities. You got the rock climbing wall, it's got pools, it's got slides, it's got the spa, it's got the gym. All are first rate facilities. As far as entertainment on board, you're going to be treated to the standard cruise fare on the ship. You're gonna have some Broadway shows, you're gonna have comedians, you might have a magician, things like that and it you're not going to see huge broadway shows but uh i just came off of a cruise that didn't have broadway shows it just had the those kind of entertainment and it was great so i had a great time so don't let that discourage you at all some of these shows can be lots of fun and really entertaining one of the best things about the norwegian epic is that they were the first to introduce the solo cabin area so 100 square foot cabins that are all brand new uh, they're kind of uh, like a purplish paint kind of bright setting so it's like a neon setting in it it looks very clean they're very sleek they're well designed and if you're a solo cruiser it costs much less than having to rent a single cabin by yourself and pay the double cost so that's a really big benefit if you're a solo cruiser on here. Not to mention they also have the area on the ship only for solo cruisers in that area. They have like a get together living room kind of area that you can get refreshments and some food and watch TV and it's a big lounge area and it's only for people staying in the solo cabins. So that's a big benefit. 
one of the things I don't like about the ship is that it has that curved design of the stateroom. So if you're in a balcony, let, first off, I'm going to say the ship does not have the largest balconies in the world. They seem very narrow and very tight and it, it's really uncomfortable sometimes to be sitting out there. And their staterooms are curved, so you'll have the bed which will curve like this and then beside that it'll curve this way. So the stateroom on the opposite side will curve in the opposite directions. The bed will be here and the stateroom here. So it kind of goes into each other to save a little bit of room. And it sounds like that, you know, should add more space to the cabin, but it actually seems to make it narrower. Where when you're walking, you seem to have to maneuver yourself around a little more. I had an inside cabin standard cabin on my last cruise it was the old typical square design and there seemed to be plenty of room and sitting area uh, so I, I, i'm not a big fan of the curved design of these staterooms but i know it does help the ship put in a lot more cabins so i can understand while they're doing it i just want you to be aware that uh, it can seem tight and those balconies can seem very very small a really neat design on the Epic was their atrium. And in the atrium, they have like a large television screen area, like you would see on say, movies under the stars outside uh, over the pool deck, but they have it inside where they can also play entertainment. So if they have say a celloist and a violinist playing there for a little bit of time, they can have background uh, pictures and things like that going on to improve the atmosphere. They can show shore excursions on there. When they have a lecture, they can hold it down below and show pictures behind the presenter of what they're talking about. So that was really, really a good design and a good concept that not a lot of other cruise lines have adapted yet, but I really like it on the Epic. And I spend a lot of time in the atrium because, you know, you grab some coffee, you sit down and you listen to the entertainment and you can see all kinds of things. So it's a nice, spacious little area to hang out. But be warned, some people just like to spend the entire day there and sometimes it can be hard to find a seat to sit down. So some personal thoughts. The cabins can seem a little small. The balcony can seem a little very tiny, but there's lots of areas to enjoy on the ship. There's lots of entertainment on the ship. The dining is really good and the standard food and the buffet and everything is, you know, right on par uh, as a high quality buffet. It's not necessarily, uh, you, you don't need to eat in a specialty dining. The food in the restaurants and on the buffet is perfectly edible and perfectly fine. So you don't have to worry about that. So if you're looking for a cruise where you don't have to pay a lot of extras, have some entertainment, be on a large ship, get a half decently affordable cabin, then yeah, the Norwegian Epic is probably a really good choice for you. Just uh, keep in mind some of the things, the decks can be crowded uh, on a sea day and you're not particularly gonna be loving some of the cabins unless you're talking about the solo cabins if you're used to a large balcony from another cruise ship or another cruise line. So that's a quick little coverage of the Norwegian Epic. It is a good ship. The crew is very good. The staff is very attentive. Uh, they're one of the top rated in Norwegian uh, because they are one of the large ships. And I don't know too many people that come off complaining about the ship. They have some complaints. But overall, they always have to say that they have a good time. And that goes whether you're a solo cruiser, couples, elderly couple, or families. So that's my two cents on the Norwegian Epic. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tip videos and more blogs and more cruise vacation channel stuff, just hit that subscribe button. And until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.